I bet you never thought that this skill and this product could be used together to make some art. Well, let's dive in. Okay, this stuff has to be some of the coolest product ever. Hi, and welcome, Sea Rockers. I decided I wanted to experiment with this spray foam. It is pretty dang cool, if you ask me. <laughs> and doesn't it remind you of the foam that rolls up on the beach with the waves? Well, anyway, I've sprayed it out. It's dried. It dries pretty quickly. And now I'm going to do some sculpting. At this point, I really had no idea what exactly I was going to do. This was more of an experiment to see how this foam works. And I really liked it. And I got an idea. I think I'm going to do a seascape with this stuff. So the first thing I had to do was do a little trimming and a little haircut in here. And then I got another wild hair and decided to pull out some of my little carving knives. And um, I hate to tell you, but this is like sensory satisfying. There is, maybe I'm meant to be a sculptor or maybe I was in another life, but probably not because I can't sculpt to save my life. But uh, anyway, this is incredibly satisfying to shave this stuff off. So my idea here was to make some kind of mountains or bluffs or something like that. And after I was happy with the general shape of things, I went ahead and took a, a little sanding block and just give a light sand to the sharp edges to round them off. So I primed everything with some gesso and realized that stuff is really hard to paint on and I still have all those little nooks and crannies. So I thought, well, I'm gonna fill these nooks and crannies with little iridescent bronze or brown or whatever you wanna call that. And so that's exactly what it did. So now I had one big polka dotted turd on my board and it's time to do the blue background of what I decided would be an ocean and a resin dirty pour. So I got a little carried away and decided that everything would be blue. And so I painted the background and the rock structure thing majiggers in blue. But stay with me because it does come out uh, pretty cool looking. It's not as bad as it sounds. But if you're a fan of the spray foam or you just really like this polka dotted turd on my board, go ahead and splash that like button and subscribe. I truly appreciate it. In this case, I wanted to make sure that I got as much of the white covered as I could. And also don't forget your sides. Now my next step was to prep for resin. And this is the reason why I wanted to paint the rock formations blue because I wanted to use a navy color sand on them. And if I don't get a good coverage with the sand in the resin, then all those white spots are going to show through. So why am I not pouring it over the top? Because that would be a much easier way of getting all this over or on it. <laughs> Well, I don't want it pool at the bottom or all over what would be my ocean. So I'm just delicately putting it where it needs to go because I don't need a whole glob of it. I wanted a little bit of the texture to show through. I wanted some of that color that I had put in those little nooks and crannies to show through, and it does. They weren't supposed to be prominent just in the background. So anyway, and then I just use my hand and make sure everything was covered and spread out. The next day my resin was dried and I got ready to do my dirty pour um, because I got so excited that I overlooked to uh, turn on my camera while I mix all the resin up. So basically what I did is separated my resin into little cups 
and added my pigments and mica powders in a varying uh, order. You can Google all of that about dirty pores and resin. And uh, anyway, so uh, here I go, just layering colors until I'm ready to pour it on. Oh my goodness, aren't those colors just dreamy? Ah, I love it. Such ocean colors. So to make everything slide around, I added a coat of clear resin to my background before I poured. And if you're a fluid artist and you have done this a few hundred more times than me, um, please leave me a comment uh, how I can improve or do better the next time. Um, so here's a little secret. Guess what? I've never done this before. So you're getting to see me do this for the first time. So I'm sure I made some mistakes that I am totally unaware of. So please leave me a comment, but be nice. Thanks. All right, well, here we go. We're gonna pour it out. I'm gonna follow the coastline here as I pour. And, ooh, those colors are so pretty. But where's my green? That was one of my favorite ones. But anyway, here we go. Well, my excitement got the better of me and I couldn't leave well enough alone. And so I, I did it again right over the top. <laughs> then I just left it alone and dry overnight. I was pretty happy how it turned out. I had done a few little tweaks before it solidified and uh, well, not bad for first timer. But in my artistic opinion, it needed a little something more. So I decided it was going to get some waves. And uh, so that's what I did. I put a couple waves on here. But make sure to stay till the end because there's some extra special bubble effects. And I'm sure you don't want to miss me almost setting my studio on fire either. So stay tuned. <laughs> But I can't stress you enough how much you need to move your heat guns and your torches because it's very easy to set things on fire as I started to do right there. Good news is, is nothing was damaged. And after everything settled down, I spritzed it with alcohol to bring out the cells. But because I didn't like how the cells dried and elongated, I went ahead and put that second wave on to just give it a more dimensional effect. And more good news, I did not set anything on fire this time. This is where your bubble blowing technique will come in. So to make this recipe, you are going to need some water, some dish soap, Mod Podge, you do or don't have to have that. And I added this little white paint. All of that will be in your cup. And then you'll put it on top of your UV cure resin. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now you don't need very much. You can see how much I have in here. And you're just gonna blow. And you're gonna ignore those big bubbles until you start getting some little ones. Now it's these little ones that you're gonna want. And you're just gonna kind of scoop those off. Water and resin do not mix. So you're just taking the bubbles. You're not going into the mixture. You're gonna squirt a little bit UV resin onto whatever you're putting it on. And then you're going to just lightly, gently get your bubbles on there. Just enough to cover it. And then you're going to take your UV Cure Resin Light and set it to about 30 seconds or so. 
and then wipe off the residue and that'll be like a, a, a residue. Mine's white because I added the paint and um, you have to do a couple layers to get a little more of effect. And you can also Google and there's all sorts of uh, ways to do it out there. But this is generally the accepted recipe. So I hope you like how it turns out. I, I think it's kind of cool. It's one of those, you know, I spy things. You see it one way and then you go, oh my gosh, there's like little bubbles everywhere. No, look, you can see them under there in the light. Look at those cute little bubbles all layered up. And here's our beautiful outside reveal of our dirty pore seascape. You know, trying new things can always be a challenge, but I believe that this one got pulled off. The contrast and the colors are just beautiful. And those bubbles are too. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I hope you'd enjoyed yourself and maybe you'll be inspired to use a new product or try out an old skill that you may have had from childhood. And with that, I invite you to join the Sea Rocker family where we try new things every day. Anyway, uh, don't forget to follow me on my other social media platforms. And thanks for watching. Till next time, go beach or go home.